A colossal 8.8 magnitude earthquake has struck along the Ring of Fire, unleashing a series of aftershocks and igniting volcanic unrest across multiple continents. In mere seconds sections of the seafloor shifted nearly 15 meters swallowing entire islands and sending shockwaves through the planet's fragile crust. Volcanic systems in Japan, Chile and Alaska are now exhibiting simultaneous spikes in heat and gas emissions suggesting deep magma movement. Meanwhile, seismic networks in the Pacific Northwest have detected low-frequency harmonic tremors, the kind that often precede large-scale volcanic or tectonic activity. Scientists are warning this could signal the start of a global stress redistribution, where energy released from one massive quake transfers along the Earth's fault lines, destabilizing weak points across the planet. From the Cascadia subduction zone to the Philippine Trench, the entire Pacific Rim is now on high alert. The question isn't if more quakes are coming, it's how far this chain reaction will spread before the planet finds balance again. It all started at exactly 4.27 in the morning, the sensors picked up a sudden violent jolt, the Pacific plate boundary didn't just crack, it blew apart. In an instant almost 900 kilometers of the ocean floor snapped, unleashing energy equal to thousands of nuclear bombs, but this wasn't your usual earthquake, it was way more chaotic. Several fault lines gave way at once, one triggering another like a chain of falling dominoes. The rupture tore across the seafloor at supersonic speed, setting off faults that hadn't moved in hundreds of years. Massive bursts of water shot up into the air, creating columns so bright they could be seen from space. Satellites recorded something no one had ever seen before. The ocean floor itself lifted several meters, forming a huge wave-shaped rise that stretched for thousands of square miles. Trillions of tons of seawater were shoved aside in one violent surge, Coastlines twisted and warped beyond recognition. Harbors completely drained then slammed full again with unbelievable force. The quake went on for nearly nine minutes. As the seismic waves spread across the globe, sensors in Alaska, New Zealand and Chile all picked up the same eerie signal, a deep continuous hum echoing through the Earth's mantle. The planet had started ringing like a bell, and that ringing never stopped. Within 24 hours things started to get extremely strange. Instead of following the usual pattern, the aftershocks spread out in all directions, jumping from one tectonic plate to another, completely ignoring every model and prediction scientists had ever made. Some quakes were happening more than 400 kilometers underground in places that weren't even supposed to move. Seismologists in Tokyo, Santiago and San Francisco began sending each other panicked messages. It looked like the whole planet was shaking in waves one quake setting off another like a chain reaction. Then the volcanoes started acting up. In Chile, Vilarica suddenly began spewing ash without any warning. Over in Indonesia, Mount Semeru's gas emissions doubled overnight, and up in Alaska, Mount Spur started showing harmonic tremors, the deep rumbling sound that means magma is on the move. These weren't random events. The massive slip from that first quake had thrown the planet off balance, releasing pressure that spread to other fault lines and subduction zones. Now each one was groaning under the strain. For the first time ever scientists saw something new, seismic waves that amplified instead of fading away. They were bouncing back and forth between the Earth's crust and core, like sound trapped in an echo chamber. That's when the real fear set in. If this kept happening it could mean endless instability, a global chain reaction with no clear end. And just when everyone thought it couldn't get any worse, the volcanoes began revealing something even more unsettling about what was going on deep below the surface. But before we get into that give me 10 seconds of your time. If you find my content useful and interesting don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. And each subscription from you is the biggest motivation for me to continue creating better content. Three days after the first big quake, volcanologists all around the Pacific started noticing something really strange. Magma chambers those underground pockets of molten rock, were suddenly swelling up fast, like they were being pushed from below. It was as if the earthquakes had turned into a giant pump, forcing magma through old cracks and tunnels that hadn't been active in centuries. In Japan, thermal cameras picked up glowing fissures near Sakurajima spots that hadn't shown any heat in decades. Down in Mexico, Popocate Petal's ash plume suddenly shot up three times higher than usual, darkening the sky for hundreds of kilometers. And far to the north in Alaska, Augustine Volcano started venting huge plumes of sulfuric steam that satellites could actually see from space. By the fifth day the U.S. Geological Survey had to raise alert levels for more than a dozen volcanoes Mount Rainier, Mount Shasta, Mount Hood, all starting to show signs of waking up. Instruments even picked up small pressure changes all along the Cascade Range. 
Each volcano was shifting just a tiny bit, only fractions of an inch. But what freaked scientists out was that they were all moving at the same time. The quake hadn't just rattled the surface, it had stirred the deep layers of the planet, pressurizing magma chambers like a row of ticking time bombs. Then, infrared satellites spotted something even more chilling. Strange heat blooms glowing across the entire Pacific Rim, all lighting up in sync like the Earth itself was heating up from the inside. This wasn't random volcanic activity anymore. The planet's deep systems were responding together, as if they were connected. And the scariest part? A new threat was quietly forming along a fault line that could change everything for North America. The first tremors came quietly beneath the Pacific Northwest. At first it was just a few faint vibrations deep underground, so weak that even the most sensitive instruments barely picked them up. But within a few hours those tiny signals grew stronger, clearer and frighteningly familiar. The Cascadia subduction zone had started to move. This massive fault runs all the way from Northern California up to British Columbia. It began with what scientists call a low-frequency quake, the kind you don't really feel shaking buildings but one that bends the Earth's crust like pulling back a bowstring under pressure. And this time the fault wasn't slipping in just one area, it was shifting everywhere at once. Deep below the ocean floor the Juan de Fuca plate started grinding under North America faster than anyone had ever recorded before. Pressure built up along the same fault responsible for some of the most powerful earthquakes in history. But instead of releasing that pressure, the movement spread the energy outward, like ripples racing toward the coast. Satellites picked up changes along coastal towns from Newport to Tofino, first a slow rise in the ground, then a sudden drop almost like the land itself was breathing unevenly. Then came the most chilling sign yet. Deep sea sensors detected a sudden drop in pressure, followed by a strange pulse of energy moving toward shore. Now experts believe that the 8.8 .8 megaquake might have pushed Cascadia right to the edge. If that fault snaps it could trigger a quake stronger than magnitude 9.01 powerful enough to flatten cities and reshape the entire western coast of the US in a single morning. But while everyone's eyes were on the Pacific, something just as unsettling was starting to happen on the other side of the world. For a long time scientists thought the Atlantic Ocean was calm and steady, a place where big destructive quakes just didn't happen. But that belief just got shattered. Seismic buoys all along the mid-Atlantic ridge started picking up tremors. At first they were faint, easy to miss, but soon they became clear. Somehow the energy from the massive Pacific quake had wrapped all the way around the planet, and was now focusing on the opposite side of the world, like light through a magnifying glass. At first geologists brushed it off. They figured these were just random local quakes, nothing to do with the Pacific event. But that theory fell apart fast. GPS satellites began showing the same strange vertical movements happening at the same time, in Iceland, the Azores, and along Portugal's coast. It turned out the 8.8 .8 quake had sent waves of energy circling the Earth, bouncing between tectonic boundaries and building up in weaker spots in the crust. Near the Horseshoe Fault, about 250 kilometers southwest of Portugal, deep ocean sensors picked up pressure changes that looked exactly like magma starting to move. That was a chilling discovery, because those were the same warning signs that showed up before the 1755 Lisbon earthquake, one of the deadliest in human history. That disaster killed tens of thousands, and sent tsunamis crashing into three continents. Now scientists are worried that the new stress from the Pacific might be waking up ancient fault lines that haven't moved in centuries. If that's true it changes everything. It means the Earth's tectonic systems are far more connected than anyone ever realized. The 8.8 .8 quake wasn't just a single disaster, it was a trigger, a planetary echo that's still growing stronger. And the most unsettling part? Hidden in the data was a clue that the Earth itself had started to do something no one expected. It had begun to breathe. Weeks after the first big rupture the planet was still trembling, but this wasn't normal earthquake activity. Seismographs from Hawaii all the way to Chile were picking up something strange, a steady rhythm pulsing every 22 minutes like clockwork. At first scientists thought their instruments were glitching, but when observatories around the world compared notes, the truth hit them. Every reading matched, the entire Earth was vibrating in perfect sync. Every 22 minutes the planet's crust flexed ever so slightly, just a fraction of a millimeter. People couldn't feel it but the machines could. And whatever this was, it was starting to mess with volcanoes in ways no one had ever seen before. Gas emissions were increasing, surface temperatures were climbing and in places like Yellowstone Mount Rainier and Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula, sensors were detecting tiny microquakes that matched the same eerie 22-minute rhythm. It was like something deep inside the Earth was sending out a signal communicating through vibration, 
Then NASA's gray satellites which track tiny changes in gravity picked up something even stranger. There were tiny shifts over the Pacific signs that mass was moving deep underground. It looked like molten rock was rising through the mantle responding to this mysterious pulse. That's when scientists realized the core itself might be stirring its heat pushing upward through channels that weren't supposed to exist. And that idea terrified everyone. If the planet's layers the core mantle and crust ever started moving together in sync, it could set off a chain reaction of earthquakes and eruptions on a scale no one could imagine. All anyone could do was watch the data roll in, hoping the pulse would die out on its own. But the answer came sooner than anyone expected, and it wasn't the one they were hoping for. Scientists hoped things would finally calm down. Maybe the mantle would cool off, the pressure would ease, and the earthquakes would slowly fade into history. But that's not what happened. Instead new stress zones started forming everywhere, like cracks spreading through a sheet of glass. Around the Pacific Rim, already battered by the 8.8 .8 megaquake, the land itself began to warp. Coastlines shifted ever so slightly. Parts of the ocean floor sank deeper. Some mountain ranges even rose by a few inches in just a few weeks. In Chile the sky turned a haunting shade of red as volcanic lightning flashed over multiple eruptions happening all at once. Across Indonesia new vents tore open across Sulawesi, shooting ash so high it reached the stratosphere, and began changing global weather patterns. And in California the San Andreas Fault started to groan, small quakes popping up in clusters that looked eerily similar to the early signs of a massive rupture. Then NASA spotted something that made everyone stop in their tracks, Satellites showed that Earth's rotation had actually changed. The planet had started to wobble its days shortening by a few milliseconds. Even the tides shifted. The magnetic field began flickering in rhythm with that same deep planetary hum. Weather patterns grew strange as the balance of heat and energy inside the Earth kept warping. For the first time ever, scientists were watching the planet's internal systems struggle to stabilize and fail. The old map stopped making sense. Fault lines blurred together. Volcanoes started erupting in sync. Pressure was building in ways so complex that even supercomputers couldn't model it. That's when some scientists started asking a chilling question. What if this isn't the planet falling apart? What if Earth is changing, going through some kind of transformation that happens on a scale far bigger than human history can grasp? But the most shocking discovery of all was still waiting, hidden deep beneath the waves. A few weeks after the planet's strange pulse slowed into a heavier, deeper rhythm, satellites from NASA and the European Space Agency started picking up something unbelievable. Huge sections of the seafloor, both in the Pacific and the Atlantic, were rising. Not just shifting slightly but lifting by as much as 10 centimeters in less than a month. At first scientists thought it might be the water expanding from heat, maybe magma had seeped close enough to warm things up, but then gravity readings proved that wasn't it. It wasn't the water moving, it was the seabed itself. Something massive deep within the Earth's mantle was pushing upward. Marine sensors started detecting deep, low-frequency rumbles, sounds that matched the planet's global pulse. Only now that pulse had slowed down, heavier and more deliberate. It felt like the Earth was finally exhaling after holding its breath for weeks. When scientists matched the data, it lined up with deep mantle plumes, the kind that feed supervolcanoes capable of wiping out species. But this time it wasn't just one or two plumes. These upwellings were connected, stretching across oceans, linking the Pacific, Atlantic and Indian plates into one giant convulsing system. Then came the reports from fishermen off the coasts of Chile and Japan. They said the ocean was glowing soft blue light swirling beneath the waves at night. At first experts shrugged it off as regular bioluminescence, or some kind of chemical reaction. But when underwater drones went to check it out, they caught something shocking on camera. The seafloor itself was glowing, it wasn't life, it was heat. The ocean floor was venting energy on a scale no one had ever seen before. Thousands of new cracks were bleeding heat from the mantle straight into the sea. And if those fractures kept spreading, what was coming next could make everything that had happened so far look small by comparison. Right now scientists around the world aren't asking if more earthquakes are coming, they're asking how many, and how soon. The planet has entered a period of geological unrest unlike anything seen in modern times, and the terrifying truth is sinking in. The 8.8 .8 megaquake wasn't the climax, it was the spark. Seismographs are lighting up across the globe. The Cascadia subduction zone off the US Pacific Northwest, the infamous San Andreas Fault in California, and the deep Philippine Trench are all showing signs of heightened strain. Together they form part of a fragile system scientists call the Earth's pressure web a vast network of faults that can transmit stress from one region to another like ripples through water. And then there's the ring of fire, 
that fiery horseshoe-shaped belt encircling the Pacific Ocean. Volcanoes from Indonesia to Alaska are acting in eerie coordination erupting or rumbling in patterns that defy conventional models. It's as if the planet itself is breathing, restless, agitated and alive. Amid this chaos one mystery continues to baffle experts. The strange 22-minute pulse detected deep within the Earth's crust. It doesn't speed up, it doesn't fade away. It simply beats mine, steady and haunting like the heartbeat of the planet itself. Some researchers suspect it's linked to magma movement. Others believe it's the resonance of shifting tectonic plates sinking in a way we've never witnessed before. Whatever it is, the pulse hasn't stopped since the megaquake, and that's what scares them most. From Tokyo to San Francisco, emergency teams are on high alert. Nations are racing to update disaster plans, fortify power grids, and train citizens for large-scale evacuations. Satellite networks are being reconfigured to monitor real-time plate movements. Even military units are coordinating for potential humanitarian crises. Everyone knows now. The 8.8 .8 quake was not the end. It was the beginning of a planetary domino effect. The question isn't if the next big one is coming. It's where it will strike first. Scientists are split between two grim predictions. Some simulations suggest that the stress will release gradually. A series of smaller quakes over months or years. Painful yes but survivable. Others show something far worse. A chain reaction of magnitude 9 earthquakes detonating across the ring of fire within weeks triggering colossal volcanic eruptions blotting out sunlight with ash and unleashing tsunamis that could redraw coastlines overnight. Entire cities could vanish beneath waves or lava flows. Global temperatures could drop, harvests could fail, and millions could be displaced. We are witnessing the planet's raw power, forces so immense that all our technology, all our knowledge, can only observe not prevent. For all our satellites, sensors and supercomputers, Earth remains a living entity far beyond our control. And perhaps that's the real message behind this global awakening. That humanity's greatest strength isn't dominance, it's adaptation. Because this isn't over, the earth is still shifting, still breathing, and somewhere beneath our feet that pulse, the heartbeat of the planet continues to echo. As the earth stirs and the planet's heartbeat grows louder, one thing is clear. We're witnessing forces far beyond human control. Rising seas, shifting tectonic plates, and reawakened fault lines suggest that our world may be entering a new geological era. The question isn't merely when the next quake will hit, but how we'll adapt as the planet itself transforms beneath us. What's really happening below our feet? Are we seeing the Earth evolve into something new? Or is this simply nature's timeless cycle playing out on a massive scale? Share your insights and theories in the comments, every idea brings us closer to understanding. If this story sparked your curiosity, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more explorations into the planet's hidden powers, and hit that notification bell, because the next tremor in Earth's story might already be underway. Thanks for being with us on this great journey. Leave your thoughts in the comments and like to help us. Remember to subscribe for more. See you soon.